I guess since I'm talking already, I'll introduce myself. My name is Maggie Kozak. I work for Clean Energy Resource Teams. My role is our events and seed grants. Uh, Pete, you want to? I'll pass it over to you. Sounds well, great. Good afternoon, everybody. Peter Lindstrom, also with CERTS. I work primarily with local governments and schools and businesses and nonprofits and a bunch of other people. Shailen. Hi, everyone. Shailen Bernhardt. I'm the Clean Energy, oops, I'm the Communications Manager <laughs> for the Clean Energy Resource Teams. Well, gosh, uh, let's get rocking and rolling here. I suspect many of you know about certs and what we're up to, but uh, just a friendly reminder that we connect individuals and communities to clean energy projects all across the state. Uh, we're a statewide organization and we've been doing this for 20 years plus, 21 years now. And so that's uh, that's certs, and we're gonna uh, be talking about tax credits. We're gonna be talking about rebates and all sorts of good things. And and we used to just talk about this in the context of the Inflation Reduction Act, but now that there's so many of these opportunities through. Uh, the state through you, uh, your utility, um, we've, we've expanded it, but let's dive right in. We have uh, this tax credit. Uh, it's been on the books for a while, but it's been expanded uh, recently. The Energy Efficient Home Improvement Credit, 30% tax credit. So if you have a tax appetite, you are eligible uh, to receive this tax credit. It that used to be capped at $500 for your lifetime. $500 for your lifetime. That's changed. <clears throat> There's still a cap, uh, $1,200 uh, cap for home improvements. Um, things like uh, energy audits, um, insulation, uh, windows, doors, that sort of thing. Uh, but it's no longer a lifetime cap. It's a $1,200 annual cap, which is really nice. And you can kind of plan out your improvements um, year by year, knowing that this cap or no, knowing that this credit is in place. And if uh, you're interested in, in the heat pump, then that then uh, uh, then you can take a $2,000 tax credit for that for that. Um, improvement. So 3,200 annual cap um, if you include that heat pump. And again, they're, they're for uh, uh, insulation, doors, windows, um, uh, some energy efficient appliances, and then heat pumps. You're familiar with heat pumps, most likely, uh, transferring heat instead of instead of creating it. Uh, this heat pump is a heat pump tax credit is available right now, $2,000 tax credit. Uh, and I would say just an overall shift uh, is towards electrification, that these really, these tax credits, these rebates are really aimed at electrifying your home and your business. Just a, a Somewhat of a side note, uh, there's in, in Minnesota, there's uh, <clears throat> what's called the Air Source Heat Pump Collaborative, and they do a great job on educating residents on what air source heat pumps are all about and what contractors are out there um, that do these types of insulations and what sort of rebates are out there by each uh, utility. So that's the Air Source Heat Pump Collaborative. It's a it's a great resource. Uh, so let's move on to rebates, federal rebates that are being channeled through the state. There's two major ones that are brand spanking new home the uh, homes rebates and the here rebate program. Um, and so the feds allocated almost nine billion dollars for these two rebate programs the state each state is is setting up what they 
what exactly they, they look like. So with the home rebate program, this is an interesting one. It's a what they call a whole house rebate. Um, and uh, it's based on either a modeled approach or a measured approach. And what I mean by that is you've got that uh, you got that home energy audit completed. You know that you need some insulation, some lighting, um, some other improvements. And um, you're working with a contractor who uses some software and they model out what your savings will be. And if that model shows 20% energy savings, that's a $2,000 rebate for you. If it shows 35% or more, that's a $4,000 rebate for you. Um, under the, the measured approach, that's where uh, you measure your electrical consumption beforehand, you do the improvements, and then you measure it after the improvements. And again, you hit that 20% mark, $2,000 rebate, 35% or more, a $4,000 uh, rebate. And if you're uh, a low, mo low or moderate income resident, those rebates double. So at the low end, it's $2,000. On the high end, it could be uh, upwards of $8,000 rebate through the homes program. For here, it's a little bit different. Uh, homes, I'll, I'll say, so I'll just back up real quick. Homes is uh, for anybody. And again, um, uh, if you're a low moderate income, those rebates double, but it, anyone can tap into this one. Here, rebates are specific for low and moderate income residents. And it's really a, a, a appliance. Uh, that's what it stands for. As you can see, home electrification and appliance rebate program. So you can see what the rebates are for those who qualify uh, on this slide right here. Both of the, these two rebate programs that I'm talking about, hopefully in Minnesota will be rolled out by the end of the year, early 2025, I think at the at the latest, but uh, uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully this fall. Um, and this one, uh, so here rebates, uh, it covers both the the equipment and the installation costs. The thresholds for low and moderate income are it's a hundred percent rebate if uh, you are eighty percent area median income or lower, and if you are between eighty percent and one hundred and fifty percent area median income the rebate is 50%. So a very healthy incentive. And one, one thing that we're really stressing is for folks to get that home energy audit um, completed. That's a, as we're, as we're waiting for these rebates to be rolled out, people can get a solid understanding of what they need to do by getting a home energy audit. So let's talk the residential. Uh, energy tax credit. This one's pretty exciting. Again, it's been on the books for a while. Uh, there's been a tax credit for, for uh, we'll say solar, for example. It's gone up and down over the years. They call it the solar coaster, but it's now set at 30% uh, for solar, for energy storage, wind, geothermal, heat pumps. Um, and uh, energy storage is a new one. Um, sort of new. It it had to in years past. It had to be tied into a solar array. That's no longer the case. It can be a standalone um, uh, energy storage system. And again, it's set at thirty percent uh, till twenty till twenty thirty two, I think. Um, and then it goes down a little bit, and then it goes down a little bit the, the year after that. But thirty percent. Uh, so it's. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, we've jumped off the solar coaster and it's, and it's predictable, which is really nice. Let's talk electric vehicles for a minute. Again, this one's been on the books for a while too, this tax credit for EVs, but there's been some pretty 
significant changes. Uh, there's put there is now some income qualifications that you can see on the screen here for those filing as a single person, $150,000 income. Uh, and uh, married couples, $300,000 or lower. Um, and then some certain conditions on the vehicle or the battery it, itself uh, that you can see here. And uh, there's this website that's on the screen here, fueleconomy.gov. If you're curi curious about whether or not the vehicle you're interested in uh, qualifies for these tax credits, <clears throat> this is a great website to go to and, and uh, you can check that out. What's new, what, so I mentioned this, the EV tax credit has been in place for a while for new vehicles, but what, what, uh, what's changed, another thing that's changed is that there's a tax credit for used electric vehicles, and that's a $4,000 tax credit. So let's go through uh, a case study here. We have the Adams family, lovely family. They live up in Babbitt on a uh, 1,300 square foot home built in the 1960s. Their income is $55,000. It's below that threshold, 80% threshold of uh, area median income. And so they qualify for 100% uh, rebates. So what does that look like for them? I mentioned it's good to know, uh, to kind of plan these out um, year after year. And uh, so they know this year they're going to ditch that old propane range and, and pick up a new induction stove. Um, and they qualify 100% through the HERE rebates um, uh, for that uh, improvement. Um, all the way down to in a few years, they're going to uh, upgrade their vehicle. They're going to ditch the gas car. They're going to get a used EV. And um, and uh, maybe they're going to get a seven-year-old Nissan Leaf, something like that. They can get a $4,000 uh, tax credit for that used vehicle. But what about the Bradys? That's a familiar-looking family. Lovely family living in Worthington, and uh, they have a 1,600 square foot home heated with natural gas. Uh, the Brady income is $115,000, and that for Worthington is under the 150% 150, 150 threshold, so they cover 50% uh, uh, rebates. So what does that look like for them? They want to get rid of their car, uh, their upgrade their car this year, and uh, they can get a, a used EV for that, um, four thousand dollar tax credit. Maybe they're going to get a, we'll say a Toyota a Prius Prime, lovely vehicle, and they need a charger for that, um, so they're going to uh, get a, 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 a the charger installed, which there's. A tax credit for oh, that. Oh, shit. It is going to be a nice day. Woo! It's going to be a nice day. We can hear you. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. And um, so uh, there's a tax uh, credit for charging. Um, and then all the way down to uh, in a few years, they want to get a solar array on their home. So 30% tax credit for the Brady family. Um for their home in Worthington. All right, uh, that's that's a lot of the tax credits and rebates for um, homeowners. There's also incentives for businesses. Uh, so a 30% tax credit um, for businesses that are interested in, in solar. Uh, it goes down to 6%. Uh, for larger projects over a megawatt, unless you meet prevailing wage and apprenticeship requirements, and then it's back up to, to 30%. And there's a new thing out there that's really cool and really taking off called transferability. So if a business doesn't want to use the tax credit or they don't have a tax appetite, they can sell that tax credit on the open market 
and um, and get cash uh, for it. And that's a brand new thing that is really taking off. And there's these what 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 are called adders. So I, I mentioned thirty percent minimum tax credit for for solar, geothermal, wind projects. Um, but there are what are, what are called adders also. So if it's if you do certain things or if it's located in certain areas, uh, then that tax credit can go up. So for example, um, I was talking to a superintendent of schools this morning who's going to do a solar project. And most likely uh, that project is going to use a Made in America components so that or so-called domestic content components. And so that 30% tax credit goes up to 40% because there's a 10% adder for domestic content. If you are in an, uh, an energy community, and that's defined as if the array is located uh, on a brownfield site, or if the community you are in has high fossil fuel employment or a closed landfill, those are energy communities, there's a 10% adder for that. So you can see uh, this tax credit, which by the way, was on its way down to 10%, now has the potential to be 40, 50, 60%, um, which is just, just a humongous game changer. And there's this uh, brand new thing called domestic content, or sometimes called elective pay. You'll, you'll see both, they mean the same thing. Uh, direct direct pay, uh, direct pay or elective pay. And it allows non-tax paying entities to tap into the, these tax credits. Um, uh, and so um, and so uh, your cities, counties, schools, uh, faith communities, not any nonprofit can now get a minimum 30% payment from Uncle Sam for these types of projects, for solar, storage, geothermal, electric vehicles, um, and EV charging in certain locations. So that's that's a game changer as well. There are, so I mentioned at the outset, lots of federal changes, but oh my gosh, the state's been busy too. And, uh, We'd be here all week if we had to present on each one of these small little bulleted items on the on the left side of the screen. But these are some new things in the last year or so passed by the state, uh, which are really exciting. Some have been rolled out and and many of them are still in the works. And we can we can uh, we can go to the into them um, if folks have questions on that. But here's just a few a few of the new energy programs. And that's me. Um, we'll be, we'll, we can share our slides and uh, that's my contact information. Happy to work with you uh, as you're going through your particular project or working with you with the communities that you are a part of. With that, I will stop sharing and uh, turn it over to my colleague, Shaylin. Thanks, Pete. Hey, everyone. I'm going to give you a really quick eight minute, 30 second spiel <laughs> on our new Community Energy Ambassadors Program. And then we'll open it up for questions the rest of the hour. And you can um, ask whatever you'd like. But right now, let me share my screen with you. And. All right. What does that look? Big yellow, big yellow sign? Okay. So I'm Shaylin Bernhardt. I'm the Communications and Engagement Manager for the Clean Energy Resource Teams. Um, and you may have heard of our Inflation Reduction Act Ambassador Program that we've been running for a while, and we decided to change it. Um, and we recently launched this new program called Community Energy Ambassadors. Um, it's a way we really want Minnesotans to better understand clean energy topics and incentives, not just the IRA. 
And um, I'm going to give you a brief overview of the program. But first, I want to share a little bit about how we got to now. So back in November of 2022, we rolled out our Guide to the Inflation Reduction Act a few months after the bill passed. And this is still here. It's still on our website. Pete shared a URL to it on his slides. And I've got, there's a big old QR code over there if you want to get to it. Um, so we wanted our guide to help people understand the bill and how they could access the clean energy incentives like tax credits and rebates that Pete shared. Um, and we started giving presentations, mostly Pete, <laughs> about the Inflation Reduction Act to different cities and organizations across Minnesota. And eventually, the requests for presentations were coming in faster than we could manage and Pete. <laughs> um, that's when the idea for a community ambassador program started to form. We knew we needed to reach as many people as possible across Minnesota so that everyone could take advantage of these new ways to pay for their clean energy upgrades and projects, but we couldn't do it alone. So we recorded our Inflation Reduction Act presentations, we created slideshows and handouts so anyone could access the information we were learning. When we kicked off the Inflation Reduction Act Ambassadors Program on May 10th, 2023, <laughs> it was a little baby, um, with an announcement in our Minnesota Energy Stories newsletter, and 50 people signed up in the first few weeks. We gave the Inflation Reduction Act ambassadors access to an online toolkit with all the resources and tools we created and all the updates that we were gathering so that they could learn from it for themselves and then also share it with their networks. And the whole point of this was we know the most effective outreach and engagement comes from trusted members within a community. And so when neighbors and friends share information, it sticks with people more than when an outsider like Pete comes in with new information, even though he's really good at it. And he always has lots of jokes, which helps, right? <laughs> so we began sending newsletters to the ambassadors every time we learned about an important update from the IRA. We ended up holding a, our first public webinar in July last year with over 170 people show, share, showing up to learn more. And before the end of 2023, we had over 800 unique individuals signed up for our Inflation Reduction Act Ambassadors Program. But we realized the need to expand the program beyond the Inflation Reduction Act. Over a year after the bill had passed, the name Inflation Reduction Act was still relatively unknown to most Americans. We wanted to make sure that we could share a full range of clean energy ideas and resources so communities would understand all the possible ways they could save energy and all the resources available to pay for their project, not just those from the IRA. So introducing the Community Energy Ambassadors Program. Bah, bah, bah. Um, so community energy ambassadors support clean energy projects within their communities. If you choose to get involved, you'll gain access to knowledge and skills needed to help others participate meaningfully in the clean energy transition. And CERTS will support you along the way. Yay. Uh, we have a goal of training ambassadors in every one of the 87 counties across Minnesota before the end of 2024. As a community energy ambassador, you will support communities in their efforts to start clean energy projects with relevant resources and connections. As community members engage in dis energy decision-making, their voices will be well-informed and centered in their community's priorities. As community energy ambassadors collaborate and network across Minnesota, sharing challenges and solutions, we hope that clean energy efforts across the state will become more rooted in community needs and aspirations with relevant and evolving creative strategies. And so this is how it works. There are two paths to becoming a community energy ambassador, a cohort guided training and a self-directed training option. Cohorts will train virtually and in person in order to engage groups from across the state and foster community amongst them. Groups within a cohort will focus on their community's needs, learning more about the clean energy topics and skills that will best serve their community. The cohort members will showcase what they're learning through projects and help to further develop the ambassador program, as well as the materials available to everyone. Our first cohort will consist of community-based organizations that will be funded to support their work, and we'll announce those members later this summer. 
We see this model as something that could work for different organizations and communities that share a common goal or need or value. And future cohorts could consist of groups seeking to learn from each other as they support community-led clean energy efforts within their communities and networks. We want all community energy ambassadors to have an understanding of many different topics within energy efficiency and renewable energy. You don't have to be an expert, you just need to be curious and open to learning. We learned from the Inflation Reduction Act ambassador group that some people want to go their own course, learning at their own pace, while others are looking for more direction. And so ambassadors on the self-directed training path will complete a series of brief webinars and recordings about different aspects of clean energy, for example, home energy efficiency, heat pumps, solar energy, and more. Anyone can join this training path at any time, and there's no pressure to complete the series. Several trainings are already scheduled to begin this June. So if you go to the QR code on this slide, it'll take you right to that page. Um, it's also under the page that has the blue, look for the blue, the blue badge. Um, and the record the webinars will be scheduled and shared on our website. So if you can't make the recorded or the scheduled time, you can watch them at any time. Those who complete the self-directed training series and wish to become certified community energy ambassadors, yep, <laughs> we had to stick certs in there somewhere, um, will propose a, clean, a project idea that will allow them to dive deeper into a clean energy topic and a strategy for engaging their community. And we hope to share these projects publicly so that others can learn from ambassadors just as they are learning from the resources and tools that we're providing. And we'll share more about the possible project ideas that people can pursue this summer. Um, we're just still kind of shaking things out. Upon completion of the project, certified community energy ambassadors will be ready for engagement, education, and outreach opportunities within different communities across Minnesota, kind of like a light version of what our regional coordinators currently do within their regions and topic areas. Um, we already, if you visit our website, you'll see that we provide community energy ambassadors with resources and tools that will help communities understand how clean energy can be a solution to the challenges they face. These are really similar to the recordings that we did for the Inflation Reduction Act, but they're expanded beyond just those federal um, and incentives. And there's some new fun stuff too. Um, from handouts to videos, we'll work with or we work with clean energy experts and um, provide accurate and relevant resources for you to learn from and share. And you don't have to be a certified community energy ambassador to access these tools they are available for everyone. Um, we'll be tracking how these tools are used and who ambassadors are engaging with so we can continue to provide relevant materials, the right translations. We're working with a group right now to get a lot of this stuff translated into different languages and then just English and reach communities across Minnesota. We also want community energy ambassadors connect with each other and we wanna foster those relationships. We have events planned across the state to explain the program and offer networking opportunities and we'll continue to gather community energy ambassadors throughout the year throughout Minnesota. We'll also continue to offer these informal Q and A's. Um, it won't always be me and Pete, I know it's really sad, but you know, there'll be other friendly faces, like maybe Maggie will do one. <laughs> um, and just to keep these open so that you can ask questions of us at any time about the program or about questions you're receiving from your community, all the events and webinars will be listed on our events calendar on the CERTS website, as well as the Community Energy Ambassadors webpage, also on the CERTS site. And so that's where we're at. Um, Sign up for the Community Energy Ambassador announcements on our website. If you previously signed up for the Inflation Reduction Act Ambassadors newsletter, you're already set. Um, you can look forward to more networking opportunities within each region of the state throughout the summer and fall. We'll also continue to provide updates on clean energy incentives like rebates as we learn about them. We'll introduce our first cohort group. Um, there will be more self-directed training webinars offered throughout the summer on different clean energy topics by our, our staff and also our partners. Um, we're rolling out a way for ambassadors to track their training progress through an automated tool. It's going to be really cool, hopefully. 
<laughs> uh, and project guidelines will be shared with an opportunity to provide feedback on what those projects are. And we'll continue to share stories of ambassadors and their communities and what we're all learning as we develop this program to connect more people to each other and to connect more communities with clean energy resources. So please visit our website for information on this and our other programs and reach out to us at any time with your questions and ideas. Um, we really appreciate all the time you guys take to do that. So thank you so very much. Does anyone have any questions? Did you, did you see some, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, uh, in the chat, Shailen, I noticed there are several questions. And so I shall defer to you and Pete in answering them. <laughs> what are they, Maggie? <laughs> oh, there's an idea, Pete. I could read them aloud. <laughs> uh, the um, Let's see, for accessibility, and because this is being recorded, I'm going to go ahead, if it's okay with everyone, and read some of the ones that have already been answered. Unless we think that's a bad idea. Okay, cool. Someone asked, does HOMES apply, H-O-M-E, all capitalized, apply to manufactured homes as well? And Shaylin thoughtfully put in there the, um, here are the specifics from the Minnesota Department of Commerce, existing single family homes and multifamily buildings will be eligible, where there's a link. Then someone asked, on electric wiring, is it whole house or can it be applied to EV sub-metering opportunities? Shaylin answered, the program is still getting worked out, so all that we found is that upgrades to a home's electrical panel and wiring will be eligible. Pete, uh, did, she, you, did you, do you have any other specifics beyond that? Know that, um, so there's a tax credit, as I mentioned, for charging, which includes the wiring, but that charging tax credit it's a unique one in that <clears throat> it is not available everywhere. It is only available in uh, rural parts of America and low and low income uh, parts of America. So I will drop in a link uh, uh, to a map where you can put in your address and see if you qualify for that tax credit. And Pete, I suspect perhaps many places that the federal government thinks of as rural, Minnesotans don't necessarily think of as rural. So it might be worth checking if you live in a small Minnesota city. Is that sound? Yeah, correct? although I was really pleased. Um, golly, I'd say 90, 95% of the state is covered by the tax credit. But I was also surprised when you really zoom in on some cities. Um it's by census track. So, uh, you know, parts of Worthington do qualify and parts of Worthington don't qualify. Parts of St. Cloud qualify. Parts of St. Cloud don't qualify. Lots of parts of Minneapolis and St. Paul qualify and lots don't qualify. So it's, it's the, the, the safe thing is don't assume anything, check on the map and, and that'll answer that um, 100%, 100%. Very good. Sounds super worthwhile, that map. Um, Shaylin added in the chat the new energy programs from the Minnesota Department of Commerce. Someone asked, do you have information on the residential auto audit requirements? And Pete put in, said yes, and listed them uh, in the chat. And Quick someone... question about that question. Lori asked that question. And Lori, were you talking about... Um requirements to qualify for a free audit or were you talking about because I know some folks um, are wondering if they can perform their own DIY home audit and qualify and that doesn't actually um, the there's that we have we have information on our website about what um, oh go ahead Lori can you clarify um yeah, I really wanted to know uh, overall all of those things that you just mentioned. So what is what is the requirement for the audit itself? And then what items require an audit in order to qualify for the tax credits? So I think by sharing the link, we'll be able to figure that out. And I don't think, um, 
it's the rebate programs in Minnesota, some of the Minnesota energy rebate programs that will require the home energy audit, correct, Pete? And I've seen on the that website that um, they used to have listed and I couldn't find it recently. And so I don't know if it's no longer a requirement, but it used to say that in order to meet the rebate or be eligible for a rebate, a home energy audit had to be performed within 18 months, the previous 18 months by a certified professional. And that was all that I had previously found, but I don't know if, if that's changing since the rebates aren't available yet, like nothing is technically set in stone, but. Thank you. Am I, am I totally lying, Pete? <laughs> Sounds legit. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> Not lying. Very good. Very good. <laughs> Not intentionally lying. <laughs> In the chat, we also have a couple more links that Shaylin included um, for energy assessment benchmarking and um, from the Minnesota Department of Commerce. Someone asked, do you have someone who can announce this program at our upcoming event? Alternatively, do you have slides we could share on CERT's behalf? And this is a question we have not answered yet. Shaylin, I suspect you have thoughts on that matter. Yeah, so I'm going to... Um because I don't like how many times I stuttered during my spiel to you all. I'm gonna re-record it later. <laughs> and that will be on the Community Energy Ambassadors website. Um, so if you want to like share that little video, you can. Um, I'll also include the slides if you wanna share the slides. And um, depending on what your event is and what folks' calendars look like, um, somebody might be able to present in person. We also have, um, like I said, we have a lot of networking events coming up that people are more than welcome to attend where um, our regional coordinators will be giving um, this a similar type of overview. So, Another new question in the chat. Do any of the tax credits at the state or federal level help fund roof replacements if it's too old to enable solar installation? I thought that was a thing, question mark. I don't think so. No. Okie dokie. Too bad. Ah, someone asked, are all the residential tax credits specific to retrofit homes or are new construction homes eligible? That's to be determined uh, with the, st the state rebate programs. Um, they list on their website uh, a solid maybe, a solid we're thinking about it for the rebates. Again, those are the homes uh, rebates. Um, there are tax credits for new construction, federal tax credits for new construction. Cool. Um, and the next person asked a similar question, are the rebates available only for existing homes? For example, not new construction. I think tax credits can be applied to new construction. Appreciate confirmation on this. And confirm. Next question, for the commercial tax transferability, is there any kind of marketplace to sell these or is it more a matter of businesses finding each other? I am not really positive on that. Um, yeah, I've seen some uh, reports on, on these types of sales, but it, how they're doing it, I am not, I'm not 100% positive, quite frankly. Always good to be honest. What would you say, new question, what would you say about the work to connect landlords and renters to this information? How does income eligibility work in those circumstances? We are actually developing a specific renters um, suite of materials <laughs> that will be available soon. And um, I know one place that I always point people to is Rewiring America. They have a lot of, um, they focus a lot on electrification in general and have a ton of resources for renters, including information about how to like advocate for your, um, like the residents in your building or in your units um, and how to like talk to your landlord about making some of these upgrades and 
um, we've kind of talked internally as staff about some of that and how that can also like be a problem for people sometimes too if um yeah so there's lots of resources <laughs> at rewiring America we're working on um we'll have stuff rolled out in in June um specifically for renters too is there anything else Pete that you have oh that's that great Pete included in the chat a link to charging tax credit map. And then we have a question. Can you please further define what a tax appetite is and perhaps give some examples of a tax appetite? You bet. Um, that's a fancy phrase for just meaning if you owe taxes, tax appetite. Uh, if you owe taxes, um, that's who can take advantage of the tax credit. Um, I'll add on to that by saying many of these tax credits are what's called non-refundable, meaning if you owe $400 in taxes to the federal government, but you get a, you're eligible to receive a $500 tax credit you can only, that'll bring down your tax liability to zero. You won't make one, you, you won't get a check for $100 from the feds. It's non-refundable. Go ahead, Carmen. <laughs> hey, Pete, you probably weren't surprised to get that question from me. <laughs> I had That's it. a great question. Yeah. Carmen. So, okay. And I know probably none of us on the call are tax experts. So, um, and we're trying to be careful in how we respond to these questions from people. But when you say owe taxes, do you mean like people get taxes withheld from their paychecks, for example, yep. and say um, over the course of the year, they've withheld $5,000 and normally they would like, that's just even Steven, they paid in what they would owe. Is that what you mean about O, or do you mean they? I, I mean what the what what Uncle Sam is expecting from Carmen in uh, year twenty twenty three, total. Okay. That's that that's not uh, yeah. So it's not like how much is left, like uh, you know, withheld or anything like that. It's like if Uncle Sam is ex expecting five thousand dollars from Carmen, mm -hmm. um, and then you get a tax credit of five hundred dollars. Now Uncle Sam is expecting four thousand five hundred dollars from Carmen. Even if you've, and if you've paid, if you've withheld five thousand um, dollars, and now you find out you get a tax credit of five hundred dollars, uh, then um, then you'd get a a tax refund. Perfect. Thank you. That's what I needed to understand better. We'd heard some different interpretations, so I appreciate that. Griffin, and just like the... Shaylin said, hopefully I'm not lying either. So double check my work. <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> Before I like... you put it in some <laughs> user, some uh, some user guide or something that I know you're working on. According <laughs> to Peter Lindstrom. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Carmen, I linked to our, we have those on our Inflation Reduction Act guide. We have those little call outs at the very top with kind of like the questions we get asked the most. And there's a specific thing about um, tax credits and rebates. And what the difference is, and we link directly <laughs> to the IRS, um, where it like talks about taxable income, um, and and we try to kind of define it there too. So that if you want to also if you want to copy and paste that and add it, <laughs> feel free to use our language. <laughs> Thank you very much. Back to our little chat, we have a new question. Excuse me, does anyone have resources for window replacements? It's not always most cost effective to replace your window. <laughs> um, there was a speak from experience. No, speaking from what Joel Haskard has told me over the three ish years I've worked at CERTS, um, <laughs> there was a CERT seed grant a few years back, and a group called Slipstream did a really cool video series on whether to replace windows or to repair them. And um, I will try to find that and pop it in the chat. And that's not necessarily resources for window replacements, but um, it's kind of a good educational uh, thing. But I don't think we can actually recommend 
businesses for replacements, if that's what you mean. Or grants. I suspect it's probably to your point about high costs, probably trying to lower those costs and perhaps the, ooh, Joel, go ahead, Joel. I will just, the smallest rebuttal would be that there is some pretty great research on really high efficiency windows that are happening out there in the world. So um, I won't completely poo-poo window replacement because there's some pretty amazing high efficiency triple pane windows out there. And I know that there's a few utilities that have rebates for such things. So if you can find a good utility rebate plus a window that you think is really going to save a lot of money for you. But in general, there's 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 a wide family of energy efficiency technologies out there that, that you may want to look into as well. <laughs> How's that for a more nuanced answer? Thanks, Joel. I'll stop quoting you and saying that you <laughs> tell people never to get their windows replaced. <laughs> As someone who lives in a home that has new windows, I will say it has really enhanced my quality of life. Never mind the price tag. Uh, on to our chat again. A new question. Follow up. Could roof upgrades apply in the weatherization column rebate? Joel, you still on there? <laughs> I feel like Joel might. Maybe if it's. Uh... If you're adding insulation, I would say for sure, yes. Just shingles, I, don't, I would be surprised. Alrighty. And I, I have a less educated comment, but I would just say I think certainly within the weatherization service provider world, there is starting to be some pre-weatherization opportunities. Um, coming into fruition where I believe, uh, but that is for folks getting weather, weatherization services. Um, and I think roofs are in that pre-weatherization world, but now this is the part where I get all squirrely and say, don't quote me on this. <laughs> Thanks, Joel. Um... Scrolling through the little thought uh, that was uh, Carmen of Cub, Minnesota, offered that some lead removal programs may help pay for window replacements. Uh, Carmen thinks she's heard about that. Um, and uh, Shailen put a link in, or well, said that windows are eligible, eligible for tax credits from the IRS form 5695 on residential energy tax credits. And dum de dum de dum. There was I want to know more. I'm sorry. I want to know more about this puppet show about climate from the Chippewa at the Chippewa Middle mm -hmm. School. I think, um, Don, I think we might need to find a way to like record that and include that in our community energy ambassadors resources. That sounds amazing. That would be awesome. Yep. <laughs> Yale Climate Commute, uh, Connections and the Weather Channel have taken an interest in it, and um, I've recently gotten interest uh, for doing our, our climate education via puppet shows um, in, from Pennsylvania and all over. So any way we can get the word out, that would be great. So That's amazing. Yeah, I'd love it if everyone could come. <laughs> It's North Oaks uh, is the is the town um, right here in the metro where where it'll be on June 9th because that is National Children's Day. Awesome. And I thought what better way than to honor our children's future with, you know, a, a livable world. <laughs> well, I'm going to drop something in the chat. If you or someone on your team has time add that event to our events calendar. Um, anything related to clean energy in Minnesota can get added to that events calendar. And that's the page that we go to when we're promoting stuff on social media. So like we'll take those event listings and pop them across social and add them to our newsletter and stuff too. So, and sometimes attend <laughs> if it's a public <laughs> show. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Those are all the questions that we have in the chat, which means we are we have time for more questions if people have um, any. And Carmen added another comment regarding windows uh, from City of Minneapolis. Uh, it does talk about removing lead paint. That is an example. 
So any other questions people have? Feel free to unmute if that is more convenient for you than writing in the chat. And just to fill in the silence, because that's what I do a lot, <laughs> um, please check out the Community Energy Ambassadors page. Um, we're still updating and adding things to it. And let us know if you have questions. Let us know if you have ideas. Like I said, um, we'll be putting up a we have so many resources that we're about to like publish that are, are resources that we've already produced that we've just recently translated into many different languages. And um, and if there's anything that you or your community or your organization could benefit from, um, let us know, because we really want to make sure that all of our resources are accessible and you know, not everybody wants a paper product to read. And so if you have other ideas for for ways we could make our resources um, better and more useful for your community, please let us know. That info at cleanenergyresourceteams.org email address is a good one to send it to. I try to check it every day, if not multiple times a day. And um, yeah, we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Well, it looks like we are four minutes, uh, you know, from closing time, and I don't see more questions. So I don't know, Shailen or Pete, any final thoughts before we uh, close out today's session? Me, just say thank you for joining us, and uh, let's keep in touch and let's get the word out on these ambassadors. Uh, there's so much information that is that is uh, available now, but and a lot of information that's just coming out. So we're all learning together. And uh, I know a lot of folks have, will continue to have a lot of questions. So keep it up everybody and stay tuned. Yeah, and it, like I said, once again, if there's ways that we can partner or support what you're doing, there are a lot of different groups that are trying to get the word out about the IRA and about clean energy resources. And man, I wish, there was a way we could make sure we're not um, duplicating efforts. So if there's ever a way that we can promote what you're doing too, or help you create something or make something that we have more accessible to you and your community, let us know. We are, we don't, um, we don't, we try not to uh, corral our stuff too much, but we will also share out um, this recording and slides and more links um, later on too to all of you. So thank you. Thanks, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Bye. Thanks for your time. Thank you.